if you put 125 in and then you take out the equity, are you getting that 125 back and the equity? Or are you just getting the equity back? You or get what the part numbers of the allow you to get. <coughs> you may be, you know, you may have a job, your day job may pay you 40 an hour. So you're bringing in, you know, somewhere between $1,500 and $2,000 a week in income. And you say, I don't really care about the cash flow. That is not what I'm about. I want more money out because I want to do the job again. I don't, you know, as long as I'm not losing money with it, I'm fine. And even if I lost a little bit of money, I'm not real concerned about that. Then you pull out what you can pull out. You don't worry about the note because you still, apparently you pulled out less than what it's bringing in. So it's still gonna make you a little bit money or break even. And then you go do another house. You're still getting appreciation on the house. You're still getting depreciation on the house. You're still getting principal reduction on the house and a little bit of cash flow. So you're still making money in four different areas. And now you got two houses that are worth $200,000 that you're getting, let's say you're getting 5% appreciation on. So you got two different houses, that's $20,000 a year you're making. Um, and it's just over and over and over. It doesn't get rich quick, it gets rich steady. It's getting rich for sure. And it's not about, it's not about one and done, let's go in and hit a home run. You know, in my opinion, that deal with $500 a month cash flow is a home run. I mean, you don't have any money invested in it. It's an infinite return on investment. If you pull out everything that you have invested in that project and you got that money in your pocket and you don't have a penny invested in it and you're still making $500 a month off of it, that's a pretty good investment. Then you go do that again. Now you got two houses. You got nothing invested in either house. Then you do a third house. Is it feasible for somebody who doesn't have $125,000 to do that? They would realistically be going to a bank and the bank would so, give them all of that? So you can do a construction loan. It's going to take a little bit more time. It's going to be a little harder. How do you get approved for that if you're just a normal person? You would hire a, con a contractor probably. It would make you hire a contractor. And then, um, and then you just follow their rules and do it. But you can still do it. They're going to let you pay for it. You can still rent it out. And then at the end of the 12 month period of time, they're gonna make you wait 12 months to do a cash out refi. And at the end of that 12 months, do a cash out refi and pull your equity out. It's a longer road to get you there, but you can still get to the same place. You can still get there. And you lose a little bit of time, but this next time you do it, you know, you pull enough money out of that, that right there. And then you may still have to do part of a construction loan. Now you're not dealing with it as bad. Right. And you just keep doing the same thing. You have a, maybe you you know another thing you got maybe you got a dad that's got hundred thousand dollars sitting in a, in a CD somewhere or some money market account that's making him five percent a year and you say hey dad can I borrow a hundred thousand dollars I'll give you ten percent return on investment so now you got to give him at the end of a twelve month period of time you got to give him ten thousand dollars on top of this hundred thousand dollars we gave you so you build the house. Now you borrow $110,000 out of the house, or if it's $125,000, now you borrow $135,000 out of the house. You're pulling all your money out again, and you're paying your debt as $10,000 for the usage of the money. You didn't deal with a bank. You got nobody watching over your shoulder. You got nobody telling you, hey, I can't give you a draw just yet, or we're only going to give you this much money. And you're always stressing out trying to pay contractors. I don't like construction loans because I don't like dealing with somebody else controlling my ability to pay people. I have a a name where I pay people when I owe them the money, we get it to them right away, we don't sit on it. And the bank <coughs> ma makes that harder for you? The bank, don't, I don't deal with the bank on that. Right, but if you were to deal with the bank Yeah, if I deal with the yeah. bank, then they say, okay, whenever you get the foundation done, we're gonna give you X amount of dollars. Oh, okay, so they so checkpoint when, you. When you get the framing done, we're gonna give you X amount of dollars. So your framer come in there and it's not 100% done, he's dragging his feet. He needs you to give him money. Well, you, I don't have money until you get it finished. I can't pay you. And then, and you know, then everybody's always mad. Everybody's mad, and I don't live in. I want to live in an environment where everybody's happy, everybody's content. You'd have to tell them up front, like, hey, this is how I, this is getting built. Yeah, Are they, you okay with doing it, it until it's done? That. They understand that. Yeah, but they're still annoyed. <laughs> well, they, whenever something goes wrong in the bank, you know, you call the bank up and say the framer got done today. Okay, I'll be out there one day next week. And then I'll show up over there for seven days to give you the money to build. So long. 
you know, you're, you're at their mercy on everything. Okay, so there is that little bit of a con, but at the same time, someone who's making $5,000 a month, they pay all their own bills, they don't have very much saved to be able to do this, but they've got a good enough credit score. They've got a good enough employment history. They can do it. They've you got can, a plan. The irritation is fine. This, do you have to bring this to the bank? Huh? Do you have to bring that to the bank? No, no, no. No, it's very simple. We just set the house plans. That's what we're going to do. They'll do an appraisal off the house plans. Where do you get the house plans? Huh? Where do you get the house plans? You can buy them off the internet. Oh, okay. I mean, they're, they're easy to find house plans. But, you know, they... It's a little bit more trouble, but you're still doing it. Yeah. You're still doing it. I built my first house in 2000 and, um, well, I built it in 1998. It was the first house I built. And um, when I built that house, I did a construction loan. And that's the only time I've ever done anything with a construction loan. And I only borrowed half of the money to build that house, half of the money I, I had. But it was still a pain in the bottom because I was always behind on money trying to chase things down to take care of people. And I don't recommend somebody with no experience of building them to run that project. Hire somebody who knows how to do it. Don't hire your friends. Don't hire somebody that says, hey, I know how my daddy built the house. I can build a house. You know, it might work out good, but I'm going to tell you there's so much room for error in that right there. Yeah. It isn't worth it. I mean, qualified contractors are huge. Never prepay for nothing. I don't care what they tell you. I need money for this. You're not getting any money until it's done. I Especially if you're on that program with the bank. I can't buy the lumber package. Well, I will go pay for the lumber package. That way I know it's paid for. And I will go from there. But I'm not going to give you money. So many people give these contractors money and the contractors run off with their money. If that contractor can't afford to float his payroll for a week and a half or two weeks while he does your construction in your house, buy another contractor. 